Hello, I'm Anthony. Today I'm going to show you a technique for joining together events, audio events uh, recorded from multiple takes. This red uh, information that you can see in the project is multiple different takes of a bass line that I've been recording for this song. The snapshot of the project that I'm showing you at this point is basically kind of halfway through the comping process. I've selected most of the audio events that I'm going to want to compile into a single bass line. The problem that I'm now going to have is that these audio events were recorded over multiple sessions and there's absolutely no way they're going to join together perfectly. Today I'm going to show you how to do that so that once we listen back to the uh, to the final product, you're not going to be able to tell any of these uh, join points. They're going to be absolutely seamless. We've jumped forwards in time to the point where I've completed the comping process. I've removed all of those alternate takes. So I've kept the events that I know are going to form part of the final baseline. And as you can see, I've already processed up to bar 48. I'm going to show you a couple of examples from this point onwards, exactly what I'm doing. First things first, I need to open the lower zone. We're going to be using audio warp today, and I'll use the, uh, the lower zone for that purpose. Let's find the first join point, which is at bar 49. I'm going to cycle around two bars. So I like to work in two bar chunks. It's small enough that you can really zoom in and see a lot of accurate detail, but you can also get some cut sort of musical context. So with a two bar cycle around the point that we're interested in, here's the bass line. Tiny little audio pop. Now, even though I do the majority of my scrolling, I've got the control key held down on my keyboard and I just basically mouse up and mouse down. Sometimes the zoom to locators is a really nice function. Here it is in key commands. As you can see, I've got a keyboard shortcut set up for it. So that's really convenient for me to just press that shortcut, zoom into exactly what I want to see. It's usually just a starting point because I am going to zoom in further than that very often. So this is how we fix the audio. First thing that I want to do is get the second event out of the way. I'm going to pick it up and drag it away. I've not lost that data. I've just moved it out of the way for now. Then I'm going to take event number one and make it longer. So I'm spanning into the next event. I'm going to perform audio warp processing on this event. And you basically want a little bit of headway in both directions. That's going to give it to me. Then I'm going to go down into the lower view, just basically click into the lower view to give this focus. Now I can zoom to locators, which is my shortcut key. And as you can see, it's filled, the event has filled the screen as much as it possibly can. This is the end of the event. So there's nothing more for it to, nothing more for Cubase to display. The section that we're interested in is exactly bar 49. As you can see, I've got audio warp open and free warp is engaged. That's the tool I'm going to use. Now, when you're using audio warp, you need to create anchor points. This note here immediately before the actual note of interest needs to be locked in place so that as I perform audio warp operations, nothing um, to the left of the note gets, gets affected at all. I can now zoom into this note and we can see the waveform of the note in question. This point that I'm hovering over with my mouse, I've just created the audio warp marker for. That's the beginning of the new note. You can see visually from the waveform, one note transitioning into another. What I need to do now is move this audio warp marker so that it's on exactly bar 49. So this particular note is gonna start exactly on the bar. Now, if you're worried about disrupting the, the kind of the groove of, of the song, Try not to panic. We're dealing with individual cycles here. These are absolutely minute adjustments that I'm making, but they are audible if they're not done correctly. So I'm going to pick up this audio warp marker and drag it so that there's a zero crossing point on exactly bar 49. And the way I like to do it is to have the wave coming up to hit exactly bar 49. On the other side of the fence, we're going to continue that event. So I'm going to make sure that the waveform on the right hand side is a direct continuation of this point. Basically, I'm doing manual crossfading. I am going to apply a crossfade as well, but I want my editing to be as perfect as possible. And that's the best I can do. So now up to bar 49, the note information on the left-hand side is as good as I can make it. Now I'm gonna pick up the event and move it way out of the way, basically thrown away the, the edit I've just made. This event is no longer visible in that zone because I'm gonna pick up the second half of the note information. And this time I'm going to fix the second half of the problem. Because I've just selected a new event, I need to go back into my lower view, re-click zoom to locators. And now you can see that it's given me focus on the correct events. This is the event that I want to be looking at. 
Now, as it happens for this particular audio event, the, the note information before bar 49 is different to the one that's actually occurring in the song. Basically changed my mind when I was recording. It was, it was all kind of partially improvised. So I don't want any of the note information before bar 49. It's all completely spurious. You're not going to hear any of that. If we zoom in far enough, you'll see that this note that's coming before the bar 49, you're not going to get any of that. We're just going to get directly into this note that starts after. And remember I said, well, I want the wave to be ticking up. I think that point there is exactly where I want. It's quite clear that the new note has begun playing at that moment. And this is the tail where I'm uh, circling with my mouse. That's the tail of the preceding note. Once again, with audio warp markers, always make sure you anchor the notes to the left or right, whichever direction you're warping in. I don't want any of these succeeding notes to be affected at all by the audio warp that I'm going to perform. Now I'm going to zoom in really close, pick up this warp marker, and drag the note information so that my zero crossing point is exactly on bar 49. That's that half of the job done. Pull the original note back in place. And now let's have a listen to that. Absolutely no audio artifact whatsoever. So I've basically already done the crossfades job for it. As you can see, it's essentially perfect. If you really, really want to go to town and depending on how good that join is, I might not perform this next step. Turn off grid in your main project, engage snap to zero crossing in your project uh, window as well and select one single cycle on either side of the, uh, the join and press X. And that will crossfade the notes together. Nine times out of 10, there's absolutely no harm uh, in performing the additional crossfade. But sometimes when you listen back to it, if it's so absolutely perfect that you just don't feel the need, don't do processing that you don't have to. Basically just use a little bit of common sense, zoom back out. Then we jump forward to the next event. So now we're at bar 56 to 58, re-engage grid. I'm going to disable snap to zero crossing again. doesn't matter for the cycle markers, but it does matter if you're moving um, audio events around. I'll just demonstrate that very, very quickly. If I move this, uh, move this event out of the way and turn snap to zero crossing off, when I resize this um, audio event and zoom in, it's not actually exactly on the beat. It resizes the event so that the zero crossing is kind of overriding the default grid. Sometimes I want an event to be exactly where I want it to be because I'm in total manual control. So just bear in mind that the relationship between these two buttons can, can be important. So let's do a quick example of joining these two events together. Elongate the first event down into the lower viewer, zoom to locators. This watermark was from preparation for this video. Let's get rid of that. Zoom in nice and tight. So this time I need to set my anchor on the note preceding because I'm going to be adjusting the information afterwards. This is the end of the audio event. I'm going to select a point somewhere in here where we're on an uptick, an audio uptick. That will do nicely. Once again, I'm moving a single audio cycle here. You can basically zoom into almost infinite mode. There does come a point actually where it turns into a, an unusable single line, but one step behind is absolutely fine. Pick that audio warp marker up and that's going to be as good as I can make it. Drag that event completely out of the way. We're working on bar 57. Don't want the first event anywhere near bar 57 anymore. Now we can zoom into this one and we can see visually what we need to do. I'm just going to move this succeeding event very slightly forwards to give myself a little bit more crossfade room to play with. Down into the lower window, zoom to locators, then hold the control key down and zoom in with my mouse. And you know what? I'm not going to mend a thing that's not broken. That's absolutely where I want it to be. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Don't get too fancy. If you don't need to do any editing, don't do any. Bring those two events forwards. Let's audition that. Completely imperceptible again. Zoom in to see how good that join is. 
I'm not even going to bother crossfading that. It's exactly what I want it to look like. Once I've completed all of those stages, this empty gap over here, by the way, is a verse, a missing verse. I'm going to need to duplicate uh, this baseline over here, which is a bit of a cheat. The final stage of the process is to select the entire baseline and bounce it down to a single event. Jump forwards in time and I'll show you an example of that. And here it is bounced down. If we zoom in to bars 48 to 50, one of those joins that we performed earlier, as you can see, perfectly smooth waveform. No audio pops or artifacts in the entire baseline. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit like if you did. Check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links if you'd like to help support my channel. Thanks very much for watching.